is muted everyone we are starting now my good evening and welcome to all of you in this 177th edition of thursday musings today we have a master of the topic we will talk about sex therapy its detail what why how and when next slide please my pleasure to hand over the session to professor dr professor from katak sir over to you i am not reading your slides apologies for that no 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 apology thank you very much for not reading because it will be the repetitions in every musings and i briefly introduce our two vibrant moderators both are winners in this election respectively amrit pardoshi anmay general secretary of ips and alin anmay general treasurer well thank you very much next slide please next one a chairperson respectful chairperson dr nilima despande MBBS, MD, DNB, LLB, FRC, OG, so much of qualifications. With special skills in hypnotherapy, EMDR, EFT, NLP, the LEFCO method and positive intelligence. PQ mental fitness coach, certified senior wild fit coach, mind valley certified hollow body and ten ex coach, international Vipa Adam and Karla Kati coach, joint secretary IASM PMN 2009 to date. Reviewer of BGOG and BMJ and SRH. Author of Menopause Made Easy, 121 Tips to Guide and Inspire. Podcast B for Pezeta. Welcome, Dr. Nirima. Next slide, please. Another, another important and very much intelligible, intelligible chairperson, Dr. Nina Savan. Affiliation Professor and its head of the unit, Department of Psychiatry, said BSMC and KM. President of IPS with John Brands from 2018 to now. Currently, last year. Chairperson IPS Sexual Medicine Specialty Committee. Areas of interest, child psychiatry, neuropsychiatry, sexual medicine. Clinical experience, 30 years. Publications, more than 100 national and international publications, more than 100. Awards, hard work, PPA one. IK Mujawar poster, Dr. Kesi Dubey poster, that AK Nayak, Dr. Pisha Awards, so many awards. And we have erudite chairpersons who then push with other. With this, I hand over the meeting to the chairpersons. Can we take over? Someone will introduce the speaker, the other will introduce the topic. Over to the chairpersons. Thank Good you, day. sir. Uh, Dr. Nina, you are introducing the speaker. I, know, uh, I, I was going to ask Dr. Deshpande if she wants to or talk about the topic. Or should I introduce, madam? Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker of today, Dr. Uh, T.S.S. Rao. We all know him. We have heard him again and again. And uh, we hope that today's session, what, when, how, is going to give us some practical tips so that we can apply it in our patients when we see them and when we are when we stumble when we don't know what to do ahead in sex therapy uh, sex ke bare mein jitna bhi sune samjhe hamesha acha lagta hai aur uh, iska yahi proof hai ki so many people had joined before the at least 10 minutes before the session was to start because kitne baar bhi sune seekhna aur bhi acha lagta hai so we really uh, think that today's session is going to give us uh, excellent insights and some practical knowledge in dealing with uh, sexual dysfunctions when we see it. Uh, over to Dr. Deshpande for her comments. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this really delightful session with Dr. T.S.S. Rao. Total Sex Solutions is, is, um, is the meme. And he is in, in incredibly highly respected, very well revered. And he has this knack of teaching with humor, you know, because remembering a lot of theory is very difficult for most of us. But when you hear Dr. Rao, you will remember some key points and you really, really enjoy being a part of uh, offering sexual medicine in your clinical practice. So really looking forward to this talk with Dr. Rao. Every time I listen to him, I learn something new. Thank you.
डॉक्टर राव यस 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 ट्राइंग टू फोकस द स्लाइड स्लाइड्स आर सीन नो नो यस नो नो ओके वन मिनट now yes this is the slide this is slide shutter view i'll show you oh yes okay yes sir it is now oh, okay good evening everybody at the outset uh, let me congratulate and uh, almost my mentor dr tofan pati and his team for the excellent job they are doing as uh, thursday musings and bringing in all the experts in the field and uh, it is a good learning experience for everybody and they have um, one this time uh, the position which strengthens this activity to be carried forward for a much much longer time and uh, it is a good learning experience dr neena dr neelima are uh, something very close to me and uh, they have been with us in so many programs when i was trying to think about uh, <clears throat> this presentation see in this particular group there are quite a few people who are almost day in day out uh, making use of uh, sex therapy and for them my nature of presentation should have been little different compared to there are quite a few young people in fact they called me that they want to join and all of that then i told them uh, yes you must join those who are beginning the their profession in the field of uh, sexual medicine so what i have tried to do is actually a little uh, mixture of uh, something academic to a little simple tips how actually this particular thing is done and uh, many times uh, sex therapy is actually a term used by many people in so many ways i still remember one of my uh, certificate candidate there was a couple and uh, he went there and uh, spoke to them for about 5 minutes and came and told me he completed uh, sunset focus exercises it cannot be done that particular way when you use the term sex therapy it carries a very definitive meaning and how actually we proceed uh, deal with and uh, a whole lot of issues are extremely important to understand and this will be an effort many of the times in conferences we get around 20 minutes 30 minutes time i must really congratulate uh, this thursday musings for giving me about over an hours time that way in fact uh, a lot of things can be presented in a little uh, detailed way what when why how and all these are all the terminology is very easy to understand but uh, what i will be trying to do is why all this type of things need to be done why it takes time why it uh, needs a training so all lot of processes are involved in this particular uh, aspect and once we have this basic grounding the clinical applications becomes easy so i will be trying to look at this whole process in a very particular way that at the end of the session one should be able to understand what we mean by this what we are doing say sex education is totally different from uh, or maybe psycho education of the couple or uh, patient is something totally different from when you use the word sex therapy so this is actually the message i will be trying to convey at the end of it so we have a uh, lot of aspects uh, lined up for our uh, discussion today and uh, one important is actually why it is important maybe about 5 minutes i will be digressing little, little the side because to bring to the focus why this is important that is one aspect really why a multidisciplinary approach is necessary this is another point what i will be trying to talk about many people believe that uh, biological this is the emphasis and somehow they forget about psycho socio cultural aspects which are actually involved but this presentation will look into almost all these aspects how it need to be integrated that means physical medical psychological social and cultural influences for the holistic management some common problems and simple solutions what we can do and uh, impact of new techniques and therapies very briefly i may just use one or two sentences for this and focus of manager from sexual function to intimacy sensuality and relational satisfaction in fact my whole emphasis may be on this particular point and uh, 
special groups how we need to deal with. Coming to why it is important. If you try to look at uh, sexual disorders, mental and physical illnesses are part and parcel of what we basically call understanding of our uh, disorders. And we are all well aware ICD-10 had uh, this particular uh, include and under the psychiatry section. And we are also aware that uh, there are a lot of things, whether cause or effect, these areas get affected. Somebody is having mental illness, low self-esteem, interpersonal troubles, dissatisfaction, and low quality of life, we are all well aware of. So also the sexual disorder, almost all of these type of things. And you imagine mental illness and sexual disorder together, what would uh, really happen? In the same fashion, when you take specific disorders, depression, anxiety, substance abuse are major, particularly major psychiatric disorders, whole lot of things get into the picture. People don't adhere to, frequent relapses happen, and the medications, what we do, extremely important, and uh, we emphasize on that. They produce problems, and ultimately, they're leading to sexual difficulty or a whole lot of such issues. They refuse to take, refuse to come for follow-up, refuse to take uh, advice. So, it is extremely important that uh, when you are trying to talk about sexuality in general, this is important. And all through the life, sexuality has some important point to actually talk about. We are all well aware that this is an opportunity for expression of passion, affection, admiration, loyalty, and positive emotions. It affirms one's body functions, maintaining strong sense of identity, self-esteem, and uh, making a person as a valued one. It is a means of self-assertion. Protection from anxiety, intimacy is one of the extremely important component and uh, the role of family in this is very, very well documented. Sexual union and capacity to perform certain activities gives the feeling of security. Those who are aged, in fact, uh, this is one of the extremely common uh, area where they get a whole lot of difficulties. That means stereotypes of aging, it actually tries to remove. Pleasure of being touched, caressed and romance and avenue for relationship, growth, and experience. So that means the lot of aspects are actually part and parcel of our uh, understanding. And this is uh, important that we actually look into that. Let me try to look at one or two small points before I try to proceed. There are uh, some bullet points extremely important to remember in the beginning itself. Sexual response, the problems there, either in the individual or in the partner's response, actually one which actually calls for sex therapy to be considered. It intends to enhance loving intimacy, but do remember, this is not for guaranteed orgasms. Teachers showing love by meaningful and pleasurable sexual expression. Do remember, success unlikely if relationship is in problem. And you are going to look at my subsequent presentations, uh, maybe about, about five minutes later, the whole emphasis would be on this particular aspect, the relationship, because this is one of the key component for the success of sex therapy. When problem of psychopathology in one partner, one must always deal with that. Whether somebody is talking about alcoholism, whether somebody is talking about uh, other drug usage, or somebody is talking about depression, or any psychotic disorder, psychopathology in the partner, if it is present, first it should be treated. And there are couples who have vestige interest to remain dysfunctional, either own or partner. They are not meant for actually what we call uh, sex therapy. And we almost always advise for those adjusted to dysfunction, do not impose sex therapy. And uh, one important thing what I have seen by many people that uh, writing PDF inhibitors or writing some drugs, maybe uh, abuprofen or maybe some other drug, this is not equal to giving prescriptions or just giving reassurances and things like that. And for choices of our doctors to deal with the sexual problem cases, let me tell you, there is no choice to doing well. And uh, a time will come if somebody doesn't actually pick up, understand, deal with, it may be considered as uh, individual is negligent. 
and uh, one of the important uh, message contempt of sexuality is a crime against life and every one of us need to be working on this area why actually we are missing out lot of cases in our clinical practices because we are somehow shy of actually dealing with sexual problems that's why it has actually gone out of psychiatry lot of starting from the quacks to in fact a whole other uh, medical surgical and other departments those people are doing and having gone attended as faculty to many of the programs let me tell you psychiatrists are the best suited individuals for dealing with all these sexual dysfunctions in a proper comprehensive way not because of anything but because we have been trained in behavior therapy we have been trained to look into whole range of psychological aspects we have been trained to look into emphasizing about social and other related aspects we are also as medical professionals aware of what we basically call the organic and other related factors also when we say what is sex therapy definition is very simple sex therapy is the treatment of sexual issues through empirically proven therapeutic techniques we'll elaborate on this particular point as in as we proceed sex therapy is a specialty of traditional therapy and works directly with sex and intimacy issues within a relationship or with an individual so for this what is necessary a qualified uh, sex therapist any psychiatrist who shows interest would be a sex therapist also for the simple reason that as i mentioned about a minute ago you are uh, well aware of how actually to deal with these uh, problems when we started in the beginning in fact one of the important thing is actually we have done ourselves a lot of mistakes and that's what we call experience is the name everybody gives to their mistake mistakes that's what axel wild mentioned and uh, unless you want to do any mistakes or you don't want to do you are likely to land up with difficulty don't get particularly for the young individuals who are uh, listening to this please please start working on somewhere you are effective some places you may not be effective but every patient will teach you how actually to proceed as a sex counselor sex counselor few of the important uh, characteristics one should have she should have a well defined ego no over involvement in fact you cannot give satisfaction to a woman because husband is not giving own sexuality a healthy attitude he should have quality of empathy understands personality and counseling very good well developed in fact uh, communication skills and capacity to understand both verbal and in fact non verbal cues the in fact the couple would be sending what we actually say in uh, what we call drawing room is sort of different from what is actually happening in the bedroom but when two people are talking or individual himself in fact what he is expressing every signal cue may have a some specific meaning actually to convey inherent respect for others problems regardless of age sex socio economic status race and uh, religion he has a life satisfying and rewarding he has the capacity to safeguard confidential information extremely important relates to client in fact he is open and in trusting manner he deals with them he creates a supportive climate for interview honest feelings and opinions where possible i cannot do in fact uh, professional colleagues he should be able to refer this particular case for further management and a proper understanding of in fact the medical psychiatric and uh, psychological issues that means it is extremely important that we are actually well prepared for what actually we are uh, going to deal with what sex therapy is not in fact this is taken from the google and uh, this particular site is very clearly mentioned that sex therapy is not phone sex or erotic conversations sex therapy is not surrogate partner therapy somatic body work or other hands on sexual healing practices sex therapy is not erotized or sexual in nature sex therapy is not done by a counselor with little sex therapy experience sex therapy is not hands on or active coaching during actual sexual experiences sex therapy is not usually just isolated to sex it usually a life therapy in a sexual context this is again one more slide taken from uh, google again in fact what my friends think what my mom thinks what society thinks what my boss thinks and uh, we are all what we are actually doing in fact there is a whole world of differences many of this thing many people in fact i still remember 
even about uh, four decades ago, when we I was showing interest in uh, sex therapy and all that, people used to make fun of a lot of things like you are a sex therapist, this, that, and all of that. But actually meant by something totally different. See, when we try to look at uh, problems, there are some special groups are available. And these are actually we are going to deal with in our day in, uh, day out uh, practice. And one important category is actually either we are talking about adolescents or in fact, uh, elderly. In fact, many of the time, these people are uh, presenting to you with so many myths and misconceptions. It, the rule applies to every person who comes and uh, talks to you, but all said and done, these categories of people, in fact, primarily, predominantly, in fact, they work out to be something like they want some information related to what is actually happening. Say children, youth on sexual development, parents, they want to understand the sexual development of their children, adolescent and adults, in fact, establishing relationship, premarital counseling, Married people presenting with sexual relationships in these shows, pregnancy, varieties of sexual expression, and counseling older people. In fact, uh, the young people are worried about so many aspects related to, in fact, uh, their functioning. And in the same fashion, the elderly. I used to remember uh, a 70-year-old fellow coming and telling me my head is full of sex. When I was uh, trying to explain to him, he should be very happy because even at this particular age, in fact, he is able to think in that line. He was telling Rao, oh, you are not uh, understanding my problem. What is the problem? Sir, it is there in the head, but it is not coming down. That means somehow, actually, we try to exclude them from our understanding and uh, trying to help them in this particular regard. I still remember having gone to one of these uh, diabetes and other related camps, and uh, one senior person who was very closely uh, associated with me in the beginning only announcing you're all older people and uh, don't talk about uh, sex because uh, we have a certain who will unnecessarily will uh, uh, stimulate, bring those ideas. See, it is not that we are trying to induce certain things in them. They have problems and they need to be. In fact, uh, one of the paper on elderly sexuality, the data what we did in the Sutur area, in fact, this is called a Sutur study, Anybody who is after uh, 57, significant drop, and after 67, hardly anybody. I still remember one of the uh, retrospective compared study of teaching hospital and private clinic clients with sexual problems. Almost 50% of the clients who had presented to us, they had one or other symptoms and signs, what we basically now call a little broader expanded the definition, the syndrome. That means sex education which is actually missing. 80% of those people, those 50% who had presented, they had actually sexual myths and misconceptions. Don't ever go with an idea that he is a doctor or he is actually a PhD holder or he is a double graduate or a double postgraduate. None of those things work actually as far as this particular aspect is concerned. I still remember we did almost about 600 uh, clients who had presented. They have a lot of concerns, size of the penis, masturbation. They actually dominate the picture wherein actually they feel there is something problem and that need to be corrected. And this masturbation and related things, myths and misconceptions so much that in fact, each and everything actually they are presenting, they attribute to this particular fact. Females, similarly, in fact, a whole lot of concerns and uh, extramarital sex actually dominated orgasm problems, breast size, fear of pregnancy, and let that particular way the least runs. Ultimately, what we are trying to talk about is actually what Dr. Vick mentioned about Dhat syndrome and what we are uh, trying to look at. This is one of my PhD thesis. Majority of the individuals who present with sexual problems, sexual myths and misconceptions are the dominant picture in them. And what he had suggested, see many people are in fact uh, anything and everybody in fact doesn't need for sex therapy in great detail. Many of them actually just need few things. And this is what actually the implicit model of Anan that some people need permission giving to be and some people need extra limited information, and some people need specific suggestions. Only in a small percentage of individuals where intensive therapy is actually called for. And uh, what Anand has mentioned, see, when he was trying to look at uh, individual presenting with a problem, how actually one should go about? In fact, there are uh, two ways actually this uh, Anand's implicit model can be looked into. There are different, different clients who need to be actually advised about a few of those type of things. 
how actually the functioning happens and how actually he is carrying forward with the minimum, in fact, uh, mis and misconceptions. And when we are trying to talk about individual sexual problem also, permission giving, limited information, specific suggestions, and intensive therapy, this particular aspect works. What I can say is, brief therapy at a particular level, majority of the individuals can be handled. Only in a small individuals where intensive therapy is called for. And when we are trying to talk about uh, how to use this precise model, and this is actually what we call as the descending level, which requires increasing the level of knowledge. Brief therapy and intensive therapy, when to refer and what to do and all one should be aware of. Some important carry home points here at this point is, most of the clinicians will be able to handle first three levels of brief therapy. It depends upon their knowledge, time available, competence, and the will to help. Many problems which cannot be solved through brief therapy will filter through. Interpersonal conflicts, erectile dysfunctions, premature ejaculations, desire and orgasm problems, particularly marital disharmonies and etc., they require intensive therapy. A may need referral to marriage counselor or sex therapist. So this is actually the message what we are trying to talk about. There is data related to what therapy, how much it helps, works and all like even for the placid model. And uh, from my own point of view, I have developed one uh, important model, which I almost always uh, make this presentation uh, available to many people. What I say is, like many people have a lot of ignorance and they need to be educated. Cultural taboos and myths actually interfere and create problems. They need to be, in fact, the permission giving for them. Many people have poor communication skills in teaching them communication skills. Sexual failure leading to fear of failure and ultimately, in fact, the treatment there is actually, if we are able to recognize a specific precipitating factor, removing the specific precipitating factor is one of the important, uh, this thing. It is only in a small number of people, this unrealistic goal focus consists of success and end performance pressures. And uh, these are the individuals where intensive therapy is called for. I have used the term ladder concept. In fact, when we are trying to talk about sex therapy, or more particularly, say, sunset focus, one step to the other step, it should be like a ladder or a ramp rather than steps, where in fact, one step to the another step, it is a little faster, the individual may be miss out. So these are the few things what I just wanted to. So intensive therapy, when we are trying to talk about very minimal number of people in your whatever type of clinical practice who are necessary to be looked at. And this is one of the comprehensive diagram which uh, encompasses almost all the things what we try to do. I have avoided the references and many of these type of things for the simple reason that this is available in literature. In fact, uh, Indian Psychiatric Society has brought out clinical practice guidelines and many of these type of things, what actually therapy and diapestic of textbook of sexuality and sexual medicine talks quite a bit about. In fact, sex therapy also in uh, greater detail. And uh, there's another open access journal, Journal of Psychosexuals, what we are publishing. Very easily, in fact, go to the Google and uh, Sage Pub. If you just mentioned Journal of Psychosexual Health, easily available. It is a gold open access in the sense that 24 hours, seven days, anywhere in the world, anybody can assess it. And uh, this is important uh, points I wanted to convey before just getting into what we basically mean by uh, practice of sex therapy. We are used going to talk about uh, principles and uh, issues involved here. One uh, in CMC Velo when I was getting training for psychotherapy used to be used a terminology called eclectic. What it means is flexible and tailor made. Somebody has money, somebody doesn't have. Somebody is motivated, somebody is not. Somebody wants to come alone, another person wants to come along with the couple. And you have time, you have expertise. In fact, because you have to everybody you cannot uh, uh, actually uh, uh, provide. So every case, every couple is actually something special. And we need to look into whole range of aspects, what actually we are going to come later. But uh, the flexible tailor-made way, in fact, uh, in an eclectic approach, that means common sense need to be incorporated in the therapy to a great extent. Individuals present with sexual problems, Couple, married, 
in fact uh, uh, live in or in fact uh, 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 the the partner marital therapy group therapy same sex individuals in fact many of these type of things are actually very well known and uh, for each one we need to actually look into when individual is alone with myths and misconceptions what we have already so far mentioned the psycho education related to the sexuality may be may be more than actually sufficient for all practical purposes and when we are trying to look at uh, the people presenting with actually the partner that's where the significant issues come into the picture historically before marshall and johnson primarily psychodynamic framework and we are not going to talk in detail there subject of sex a window to understanding the mind this is what actually fried mentioned and we are all well aware of anxiety how it actually affects the individual and more and more he what he tries to control how actually it can create conflicts conscious and unconscious mechanisms defense mechanisms instincts psychosexual development and related issues dreams and analysis and uh, in fact the catharsis to a whole lot of things the free association many of these type of terms are used in yours they were actually the primary mode there were difficulties very long standing and uh, that amount of time uh, 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 training in psychoanalysis missing and quite a few questions about many of the concepts actually they started coming up and uh, one major failure is actually the determinism that nothing can be done because something has happened and we have uh, actually acting on some of those type of uh, impulses so i was very fond of freud and even today in fact i try to talk in for these are of photos related to my vienna visit and uh, sigmund freud university and uh, i almost always tell when you are trying to talk about sex therapy psychodynamic factors are extremely important to be kept in mind and uh, don't forget freud many of the things many of the therapies which came into being in fact all of them have not succeeded so one should be well aware of how actually when actually in fact some of these type of things should be entertained whole lot of revolutionary things happened following the recognition of human sexual response in fact uh, human sexual inadequacy and uh, other related books actually what he uh, brought forward the sexual response cycle related thing brought into focus when you are trying to talk about two individuals one is from the mars and other one from the venus we have so much of uh, different different uh, type of uh, uh, personality related issues as far as sexuality sexual functioning is concerned we are all well aware men are very fast on the trigger in fact he is tubulate in so many things but when it comes to sex he is uh, ready but female they take their own uh, sweet time and uh, one of the sexologist mentioning uh, stream is history you put the plug on slowly it heats up it is hot for pretty length of time even when you remove the plug it is still hot whole lot of such in fact the concept that came into being what it actually mentioned in fact men are fast on the trigger once ejaculate in fact they have actually what we basically call refractory period and when we are trying to talk about ejaculation and orgasm in case of male they are so closely intertwined it is actually in fact it takes care of lot of things and as far as the women are concerned in fact we take they take the own sweet time they could be multi orgasmic but taking them up to that particular level whole lot of issues are involved and uh, one of the other understanding is females can experience multiple orgasms and may not experience orgasm at all all permutation combinations are there and when we are trying to talk, talk about sex therapy in general do remember it is actually the couple and more particularly the person involved in this particular whole process is actually the woman so issues are same desire arousal and plateau and ultimately one can reach orgasm but taking her there actually is one of the whole lot of uh, issue and recent advances in fact related to the behavioral issues classification and their implication for treatment before uh, emphasizing what actually what i want to tell about sex therapy one or two basic ideas are necessary to understand why all these processes are necessary traditional sex therapy utilizes physiological psychological urological medical makeup in fact what actually the model presented by marshall and johnson and then subsequently if you try to look at dsm system or whatever it is a linear model there is a desire and if there is a desire problem arousal is likely to get affected orgasm desire is all right arousal 
In fact, uh, whether he is able to reach orgasm or not is a linear model, easy to understand. But when we are trying to talk about uh, female sexuality, the circular non-linear model is actually extremely important. This may apply to the man also, but much of the literature, whole work is actually available in relation to the female sexuality. The Basin, who spoke about, who spoke about relationship as one of the extremely important things. We are all aware of David Reed's. See what Marston Johnson presented, they're all purely physiological uh, steps. Seduction, sensation, surrender, reflection. These are the terms what actually, in fact, uh, David Reed mentions in the, uh, what we basically call erotic stimulus pathway, they convey that psychological, relational, or uh, romance and other related aspects are the extremely important component for understanding this whole process. And Basson's model. See, if you try to look at the linear model, what was very strongly suggested for the male, it is easy. One step to the other step, it moves, and maybe sometimes it moves very fast or it moves very slow. But as far as the women are concerned, there is a whole lot of issues which can act as breaks at multiple points. And one of the classical examples I almost always say is at the peak of a sexual response also, women may be worried about whether uh, the child's bag is ready, whether the curd is set, and many other such terminologies. In fact, examples, they indicate that, in fact, they are burdened by a lot of things. And among them, the trust relationship and these issues are extremely important. This is one of the extremely important diagram. In fact, I just would like to mention here, and this is important for our understanding. See, as far as the fantasy alone, in fact, when you are trying to talk about conditions for orgasm women, man can uh, imagine, fantasize a whole lot of things much more easily compared to the woman. Feeling guilty and feeling uncomfortable about many of the things actually which prevents her from actually reaching. Thrusting alone with minimal collateral stimulation, and in fact, uh, with intercourse situations, only around 30-35% of the ladies can actually reach uh, orgasm. And orgasm, when we are trying to talk about women, it all depends to a great extent on, in fact, oxytocin mechanism, I'll come to that one minute later, the intensity of stimulation and for reaching orgasm is the touch, touch, in fact, touch alone really matters in uh, majority of the individuals. And this is where why sex therapy or the sunset focus and such other things actually become extremely important. And uh, let me tell you, with vibrator, in fact, uh, the data may be a little uh, problematic. Almost 100% of the women can be taken to orgasm. What it means is <clears throat> there is nothing like uh, anorgasmia or uh, what we call frigidity and such other terminologies what people use to use. It all indicates that there is actually something problem with the partner who actually should have actually worked out this particular issue in a different fashion. So, the extent of stimulation, how it is provided, and relationship maintained, many of these type of things are extremely important to be considered in case of uh, female sexuality. And uh, that I was using the word classification. See, if you try to look at ICD-10, there are only terms given and, uh, in fact, functional or non-organic problems. And uh, this is actually one of the most hopeless way actually one can actually categorize this. DSM-4 was slightly better because psychogenic and organic etiology, in fact, it has separated it out to some extent. DSM-5, interest and arousal disorder have been combined. See, why this is extremely important uh, for our understanding of cyst therapy is, in case of man, the stages like uh, desire, arousal, orgasm, and uh, resolution can be delineated easily. And when you are trying to talk about women, in fact, understanding women is difficult. Understanding their sexuality is much more difficult. Even the scientists felt it is actually something problematic. Female sexual interest and arousal all, in fact, combined together, in fact, everything, because when actually the component desire is there and when actually the arousal uh, starts, uh, these things are extremely difficult. And we are all aware, in case of man, erection and other related things are easily documentable. In case of woman, everything is hidden. It is swelling and lubricatory response, what we are trying to talk about. And that's where the whole lot of uh, difficulty. The another category, geratopelvic pain and penetration disorder. And sexual aversion disorder, it has been taken off from here and has been put under uh, what we call phobic type of uh, relationship and other related thing. So 
these classifications are extremely important because <clears throat> when somebody is having hypoactive sexual desire disorder, this is not an individual for your uh, sex therapy. The cause has to be found and that need to be corrected if there is organic factor present. Only then the question of sex, uh, what we call sex therapy, comes into the picture. To overcome this, one of the most recent thing and why this is actually important is, I am trying to convey the message here to you that there is a whole lot of work is actually happening to understand the sexual problem in a very comprehensive way. In fact, the International Guidelines for Diagnostic Assessment by WPA talks about there are four axes in first component. That means standard multi-axial formulation and second component, ideographic personalized formulation. I'll come a little later. Clinical disorders, first rule out mental and general medical disorder. Extremely important. You cannot do sex therapy if somebody is having depression. If somebody is having alcohol problem, you need to be corrected first. Somebody is having diabetes, you need to correct that particular problem first. Extremely important. The extent of disability, social functioning problem it has actually created. This is, that means, emphasis on comorbidities, the extent of disability it has created in personal, occupational, with spouse and partner, with other relatives and social in general. And we can, in fact, they have given the scale related starting from none to massive. But more important here, actually, what I'm trying to look at is actually the contextual factors. What do we mean by contextual factors? <clears throat> Family house, extremely important. See, you cannot do sex therapy and uh, home exercises and other related things where a single room <coughs> tenement and there are about uh, eight and people actually living. So family house. An uneducated fellow, you can't think in terms of sex therapy, education and work. A very poor fellow, in fact, is worried about day in, day out uh, problems of living, how actually happen next day. Culture and environmental factors and personal emphasis what actually he can make. That means... What we are trying to talk about here is the individual need to be looked into from a significant way, almost all the aspects put together for rating quality of life, what actually this individual, starting from poor to the excellent one can rate on this particular uh, scale what they have given. So keeping all these factors in mind, how actually one can proceed, what we really mean by actually sex therapy and uh, what are the concepts and processes involved in this? See, if you look at the DSM model, <clears throat> it is essentially biological and a medical viewpoint. Relationship and psychological factors get neglected in this particular model when you are trying to talk about therapy. Comprehensive sex therapy combines Marston Johnson's therapy plus other psychotherapy techniques judiciously being incorporated. In fact, we have among them, in fact, sequential model models where multifaceted intervention sex therapy where uh, behavioral systems therapy is uh, brought in, or system framework contextualized sexual dysfunction in terms of religious, culture, and other social institutions. This is Lo Piccolo. In fact, is one of the very dominant name in uh, when we are trying to talk about sex therapy. He talks about how actually all of these type of things are extremely important. What we are trying to work on this, or the meaning we are trying to convey, see. If you are trying to look at the limited little picture, anatomy, physiology, problems, in fact, you try to correct it. There is a hormonal problem, you try to correct it. There is a myths and misconceptions, you try to correct it. So this is the end of the story there. But many of the times, problems, what we come across, calls for bigger picture. In fact, this is what is called as uh, not only the particular item, but a whole lot of issues, starting from the partner, wife, you know, in fact, partner, society. In fact, a uh, lot of other such things actually get into the picture. So larger social, religious, and cultural con get into the picture, and they're extremely important to be remembered in the treatment. Initially, we mentioned about psychodynamic concepts of the Freud, which came into. But there are a lot of developments. I am not going to touch here today at all, unless some questions come later. Psychodynamic aspects are elaborated in so many ways. Other systemic, humanistic, feministic schools have come forward with the different, different forms of uh, uh, therapies, how actually to deal with. And when we are trying to talk about sex therapy, CBT is one of the important component in the whole process. One is the, when you are trying to talk about the sex therapy, what we basically plan, 
to have this uh, educating the individual is extremely important. And in some of the individuals, I mean, some of the problems, CBT on its own right can be uh, quite effective to deal with sexual anxieties, address behavioral repertoire, challenge irrational beliefs. So these are all, we are all well aware. And I will not elaborate. There are about seven to eight slides related to this. So only to bring to the focus, all of you have been uh, mentioned again and again about what CBT in depression time-limited evidence-based psychological intervention. And what we know, it is a directive, time-limited, structured, and it places great emphasis on homework exercises. When you are seeing cognitive behavior therapy, here the common general features are patient as an active partner, provoking and maintaining factors, antecedents, their understanding necessary for understanding current behavior, and to modify actually the consequences which are related to this. That means the way of thinking and a whole lot of things, in fact, has been found to be extremely important. Automatic thoughts. In fact, uh, in sexual problems, these are all extremely important. Many actually couple, in fact, uh, what my wife will think. In fact, just to take off clothes, they may be worried so much about their body and the, uh, in fact, uh, the functionality and lot many other such things. Here, there are two important things. One is called as cognitive schema. Structures that contain an individual's core beliefs and assumptions and cognitive distortion. We are all well aware, refers to systematic error in reasoning what we do. My partner is not showing interest because one or other related things actually they come forward. They feel sad, depressed, and hopeless, and a whole lot of things actually they create difficulty. Arbitrary inference, interference. In fact, one of the inference, one of the things what we have seen, in fact, uh, I had a couple who actually they wanted divorce because, in fact, the morning, the wife, she squeezes the, what we call, uh, toothpaste tube in the center, which husband doesn't like. In fact, they were talking in terms of uh, what we basically call uh, divorce. So... Very important thing is actually, in fact, uh, arbitrary inference, selective abstraction. If there is a time, actually, I can play one or two small these things, uh, videos, how actually this is extremely important for understanding. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Sharma. I am an IIT graduate working with IBM company. My annual package is. This is your resume. So, what do you look at? You know, what matters after marriage? Money. Love matters. Romance is the most important ingredient of a successful marriage. Do you know? Romance, romance. Karna? Uh, mm. Oh, God. It's a lot of hair. How do we do it? Do you do anything? Who? This bench. Ki. Garden key, Mossam key, Mary. Bench bought Masbut, Mossam pleasant, hai. garden me pani de Niki Zorot, Tumbot Kup Suratu. Chodo Tumari Akebot Nashiri Chodo Tumari Bal Bilkul Ration Jessam. और तुम्हारी आवाज कितनी सुरीली है गॉड oh अब छोडू भी इतनी लंबी लंबी तो छोड़ रहा हूं और कितनी छोडू आई रिमेंबर इन फैक्ट इन वन ऑफ द केस कपल 10 गुड थिंग्स टू राइट अबाउट हस्बैंड एंड 10 बैड थिंग इन फैक्ट 10 गुड टू राइट अबाउट वाइफ टू पीपल गिवन वाइफ रेड इन अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स Husband came about and uh, three, four days later telling that I have not found anything good at all in her. Another chance was given. So people actually, in fact, uh, find it so difficult actually to recognize certain things. Food I prepare so well. In fact, he doesn't uh, appreciate. But we have to actually train them actually to make, understand that he is eating well means actually possibly. Many men are absolutely poor in actually, in fact, uh, uh, taking care of the partners and their needs. Overgeneralization, magnification and minimization. And there's another one, small video and it's only to just break the monotony. I thought this is important. Uh... 
मर गए बेटा दिस इज तो रोमांटिक आज शाम पक्की है एक सेकेंड खाने से पहले प्रेम तो कर लो हे प्रभु ये सब सहन करने की शक्ति देना प्लीज क्या क्या दिखने में तो बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है मतलब खाने में खराब भी हो सकता है मैंने ऐसा कब कहा जस्ट ना जब तुमने तो पे बोला कि एक्स्ट्रा स्ट्रेस दिया तो तुम्हारा मतलब यही था कि टेस्ट में खराब भी हो सकता है नहीं लेकिन मैंने ये सोच के नहीं बोला हाँ तो तुमने ये कॉन्शियसली सोच के नहीं बोला लेकिन तुम्हारे सब कॉन्शियसली यही सोच थी इसलिए बिना सोचे बोलने आरोप तुम्हारे सब चीज सोच सामने आ गई प्रभु मेरी प्रेयर अपने तक ही रखनी चाहिए थी ना अगर मेरी कुकिंग से इतनी ही प्रॉब्लम थी तुम्हें तो मुझे बोल देती एक बार मैं इतने एफर्ट्स लेती ही नहीं यू इट्स अरे बेबी मेरा ऐसा कोई मतलब नहीं था कॉन्शियसली ना तब कॉन्शियसली यू आर अनेसेसरी रीडिंग खाना देखने में भी अच्छा लग रहा है अभी तो ठीक है अभी भी ठीक नहीं ये तुमने भी में जो ताने का तड़का डाला है ना आई कैन स्मेल इट लाउड एंड क्लियर कौन सा ताना कौन सा तड़का ये ये देखने में भी अच्छा लग रहा है ये जिस इंटोनेशन के साथ तुमने भी पे स्ट्रेस दिया ना सब समझ में आता है अरे बाबा मैंने इतना सोचकर भी पर स्ट्रेस नहीं दिया एग्जैक्टली माई पॉइंट अगेन ये तुम्हारे सब कॉन्शियस में था दिल की बात जुबा पे आ ही जाती है बच्चे ये देखने में भी अच्छा लग रहा है ये क्या कर रहे हो विदाउट एनी फीलिंग बोलने का ट्राई कर रहा हो रोबोट की तरह ना कहीं पे एक्स्ट्रा स्ट्रेस होगा ना मेरी कोई एक्स्ट्रा फीलिंग ना रहेगा बांस ना हो जाएगी बांस मुझे तो पहले ही पता यू हैव नो फीलिंग्स फॉर मी तो मेरे बनाए हुए खाने के लिए फीलिंग्स कहाँ से आए मुझे रियलाइज ही नहीं हुआ की तुम्हें इतनी देर से भूख लग रही होगी बन गई सो कैसा बनाया था ना सो lot of things will happen in the relationship cbt is one of the extremely important things i'll not go into too many details in this particular area personalizing dichotomous thinking mind reading in fact many of these type of things actually people have documented each of these type of things are necessary to be taken care of one of the hallmarks of higher order thinking is the ability to attain perspective or to think about one's thinking but this will be missing in many of the couples because emotions become so important actually indus psychological disorders have been shown to have deficiencies in perspective take right taking they have difficulties in distancing themselves from their automatic thoughts and thus are impeded from reevaluating their thinking depressive affect anxiety and anger majority of these type of things have been documented to in uh, wpa system clinical problems and their contextualization 
Sir, your voice is not heard very clearly. Right. No. Hello. Good sir. Yeah, yeah. And how to establish, in fact, restoring and promoting health? What are the positive and negative issues involved? One need to actually look into. And now the whole concept is actually sexual wellness clinic, wherein if things are going on five minutes, also there may be almost always there's actually place for what we basically call correcting. Before we go into sex therapy, first we have to establish whether sexual disorder or uh, is a relational marital problem. One of the very easy way to recognize is somebody is having performance other related uh, functionalities. It is actually a sexual disorder. But if you try to look at, he is not able to perform with his wife, but he is able to perform with another partner. This is a mainly relation, relational or what called marital problem. Very easy to differentiate, and one has to actually has to have a very significant uh, uh, understanding this particular area. Though I have simplified this uh, version. I still remember one of the cases who uh, the road where I practice, a Malayali, and uh, he had come and he came and told me I am having ED and uh, P. He was very much uh, used to the internet. When I went into into the details, he was telling uh, his uh, work pattern. He closes the shop around seven seven thirty, goes to his girlfriend's house. He has ejaculation early, then goes home and after dinner he tries to perform with his wife. He was not able to perform. Here, the sexual problem, what he is having is not ED or PE. We have to ultimately fix up the timetable in such a way that he will not go to the girlfriend's house when he is going back home. He will go home straight. After dinner, he was able to perform. And when in the morning, he was able to meet his girlfriend and there was no premature ejaculation. What I am trying to convey, this particular uh, differentiation at a particular point is extremely important uh, for our understanding whether it is a sexual problem we are dealing or actually the, the relationship problem. Many people believe sex is actually something like uh, screwing, in fact. But it is actually Levine who was mentioned about, there is that seventh component, emotional satisfaction. If it is missing, in fact, uh, it is actually not going to give any results at all. When sildenafil citrate was introduced, we all believed that all men's problems are solved, women's problems are solved. And two years later, one of the Chinese study about 2,000 plus couples Hardly anything has changed. What it meant actually was that, in fact, the whole issue related to what we basically call this emotional satisfaction, which was actually missing. Recently, I was there in one of these uh, Pfizer ad board program. And there the discussion is establish endothelial dysfunction. And you try to treat this with uh, what we basically call sun drugs. True as far as quite a few people are concerned. But there are actually quite a few couple who have problems in intimacy, sensuality, and sexuality area. Sex therapy is rarely a simple performance problem with a simple cure. Sexual issue is a profound human relationship problem. It affects quality of life of individual and couple. Recent decades, one-dimensional medicalization, especially male sexuality, highlights oversimplification of human sexuality. This is an extremely important point what I'm trying to. In fact, in case of man, it is easy. You give certain drugs which acts at some particular point, it brings about what you call erection. But as far as the woman, we are all aware, the erosion is yes, distributed so wide and in fact, a man are not able to understand the whole process, likely to land up with the difficulty. And we are all well aware, 50 to 85% of the couples seeking therapies, marital discord and sexual difficulties are inter intricately interconnected. And... Uh, we are also aware that uh, difficulties in one area of the Africa affects difficulty in another area. Reciprocal primary escalation of sexual dysfunction is very well documented. And uh, addressing relationship problems and therapy increases the treatment adherence and better outcome. This is actually one of the important message I want to convey in the beginning itself. Coming to marital therapy, anxiety in general and in the relationship, specific performance anxiety, Spectating, watching, in fact, uh, that is one of the reasons why, in fact, the man loses the erection very fast. A negative evaluation of self, perfectionism, negative relationships, dynamics, unrealistic expectations, that, in fact, some of these type of things lead to significant problem because multiple factors are involved. Anything less than multidimensional perfect use falls short. Mm -hmm. 
models of integrated marital therapy. I am not going to elaborate. Academically speaking, some important and necessary for those people who want to pursue in this particular field. Say, psychosexual couple therapy clinic of Marsley has some particular patterns. Behavior systems model of Crow and Ridley, what we have already mentioned. Psychobiosocial model of Astin, Asin and Heman. And multifaceted intervention and sex therapy of, uh, in fact, uh, Dennis and Helen. So these are a lot of such things are there. There is something called a sexual crucible model. Just like a goldsmith, he puts, uh, melts the gold and gives a different shape. Based on that, what it actually means is that uh, integrating medical, couple, behavioral, cognitive, psychodynamic therapies is actually necessary. Good enough sex model of Mills and McCarthy. Adaptation and modification of psychosocial model. It takes away the emphasis on performance and focuses on pleasure. Sexual dysfunction regarded as an opportunity for increased cooperation and intimacy. Ultimately, it is the couple's satisfaction which is actually extremely important. Pleasure, intimacy, and satisfaction. These are emphasized to a great extent. There is another model which is called as inter-systems model, couple, family, and cultural system. Again, it encompasses, uh, there are few little differences between one and another, and uh, let us not go into too many aspects related to that. And when we are trying to talk about sex therapy, what actually we mean by that, and uh, an intensive sex therapy means uh, where, in fact, in case of man, it is very easy to handle. As far as the woman is concerned, so many drugs came, and uh, what it actually talks about is, it just doesn't work the way actually it works in case of man. Why? There are a whole lot of things are there. Pleasure can be sexual, happiness is not. And uh, the whole woman's issues are revolve around this particular uh, aspect. Sex seems to be equivalent to love. Sex is beautiful in itself, and I'm not against it, but there are higher states to go and reach and attain. This is what actually the Osho mentioned. And uh, these are all uh, extremely important when you are trying to deal with uh, women's problem. Very fast, man is testosterone dependent. It is very easy. Want more, have more partners, and a whole lot of issues related. But as far as the woman is concerned, desire for sex more often linked to the relationship status and social norms. At all ages, women are more likely to report sexual dysfunction because for them, often it becomes a duty. Less sexual frustration, sentimentality, romance become extremely important. For many, it is difficult to achieve orgasm. Intense pleasure and actually intercourse not linked. And many such these things actually and hormones. This is one of the, uh, just to break your borot. तो वजीना नगर से स्ट्रेट बस ये लड़कों का प्लेसर पॉइंट कहाँ पड़ेगा मैडम यहाँ से सीधा जाने का एक बिल्डिंग पड़ेगा एक ही बिल्डिंग है बुर्ज खलीफा टाइप बिल्डिंग से कहाँ कहीं नहीं उधर ही आसपास कहीं भी कुछ करने का भी नहीं सिर्फ सोचो बोल घना घन बिल्डिंग I know. So there is a whole lot of difference. So quality of their marriage depends on marital intimacy, sexual communication, and sexual interaction. So when we are trying to talk about sex, penetrative, primarily the whole emphasis by many is related to this, but relational, participative, recreational, these are all extremely important issues and somehow they get neglected. So Looking into some of these area, intimacy, there are many aspects, attachment style, family dynamics, sexual identity issues, self-esteem, they all matter. Is the pursuit of sexual intimacy, women's work, let us not go into too many details here, West individualistic but East collective societies and whole lot of childhood origin of intimacy issues are there, obvious to some and difficult to others, but whole lot of things can get affected in this particular uh, process. And when we are trying to talk about, which is more important, sex and intimacy, and when you are trying to talk about female sexuality, this becomes extremely important. If they are in love, in fact, it is easy to handle. If there is a problem, in fact, definitely need to be looked into. 
talking, fighting couples are hundred times easy to handle than those people who have stopped talking to each other. They are sleeping in different, different uh, rooms. In fact, many of these type of things call for a very complex way of uh, looking at it. In fact, we are all well aware of Stern's work, Low Triangle, I won't go into the too many details. See, developmentally speaking, many of the times we won't get what we, in fact, in fact, this is where actually the way actually the things work. I always say, when you are trying to talk about intimate stories, somebody with whom actually we were playing and uh, very happy as a child, in fact, uh, this is what actually, in fact, I call uh, Gita. But somewhere uh, we grew up and at somewhere adolescent and maybe a little later, our whole interest was related to this voluptuous female we, we came across. We never approached, but all said and done, it is stuck that this is actually which is going to give. Ultimately, somebody marries a person who is called Sita because, in fact, she should be uh, homely and many of these things, and uh, that's what actually the creates quite a bit of difficulties. So, different, different levels, different way it actually acts, but all said and done, it is actually extremely important to be remember that these things, processes actually work. And when we are using sensuality, I still remember when I was a postgraduate uh, student, one senior fellow coming telling that other lady, your husband was looking at many places and on the way other girls. Her response was very simple, more hungry, that much better. In fact, many of the times, many women get into the difficulty because sensuality is one important component which they feel he should not look at others, he should not do this, do that, and many other such rules and regulations they try to bring up. I still remember a couple wherein, sir, I don't get aroused by her because she won't take bath every day. She's always in the nighty, and somehow I don't feel happy. When this particular issue was brought for discussion in one of the therapy sessions, wife was telling, sir, please tell him I am his wife, not girlfriend. No, you got the point? People actually may somehow neglect the individual personal uh, needs and ultimately they land up. And when we are trying to talk about sex therapy in case of female, see, we are all well aware of the role of testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, but now we are aware that oxytocin is the responsible cause for what you call orgasm. And this is what, in fact, any romantic situation we feel hot, it is because of the oxytocin effect. And it is one of the hormone extremely important for bonding, multi-role attraction, touch, mating, sex, orgasm, bonding, labor, parenting, nursing, you name. And uh, the initial uh, strong uh, response what we get is related to this particular oxytocin effect. Once married, in fact, in the seven fair hours, at the end of which this particular oxytocin effect goes off, unless another somebody comes, in fact, he may not get it. So, if somebody is able to handle his wife like girlfriend, in fact, the things could be something totally different. Therapy should focus on many of these type of things. How it can be done? Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphin, each has a role. <clears throat> In fact, more and more restrictions, rules, a narrow way of looking at the relationship can create quite a bit of difficulty. In fact, each personality is left to unfold itself in the, to the best extent possible. This is what actually brings about the whole lot of things. So when you are trying to talk about female sexuality, the sex therapy, Sensitive focus exercise has become extremely important. Ignorance of facts surrounding sex is the greatest single deterrent to the active enjoyment of sexuality is what actually. We have to establish whether psychologically sophisticated or not. If it is not, in fact, there are plenty of drugs available which act at the central level, at the peripheral level, those which are initiators and conditioners. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if not working out anything, in fact, the processes or temporary release and mechanical devices, they all form treatment uh, techniques of individual. When you are trying to talk about sex therapy, it usually refers to the behavior modification process for sexual dysfunctions pioneered by Marston Johnson, but we have actually modified. We initiate session as a couple, assess past and present therapy, medication factors, rule out organicity first, motivation, conduct individual sexual histories, couple feedback session, Ultimately, this may take about 20 to 25 sessions and uh, subsequently, in fact, what actually to be done to prevent relapses. Admission. See, I have seen those people who have unconsummated marriages and all of that. From the house, trying to manage, it becomes quite difficult. It is also almost like going for honeymoon. May need about 15 days for uh, starting from sex education, prohibition of the sex, and then uh, actually what we talk about uh, each stepwise home exercises and other things, in some of these individuals, because the psychopathology is so strongly set, sometimes it becomes difficult. 
medical and psychological factors rule out and handle it properly. And when we are trying to talk, talk about sex therapy, many times I have seen people missing out on uh, extremely important uh, components. Just to... What I was trying to convey, anemia, thyroid problems, all of these type of things to be looked into a proper detail, comprehensive assessment is necessary. The whole emphasis in sex therapy is the partner is the battery and the share. The third one, many of the women's problems are just solved by actually making her free from a lot of burdens. Very recently, I had one patient uh, couple, in fact, uh, both of them work in Bangalore and uh, they will start from Monday and uh, she prepares breakfast, everything in the morning, prepares something for the lunch, comes back around 8 o'clock in the night and then she has to prepare dinner. I am not having a sexual interest. In fact, here the treatment is appointing a, actually a cook who can take care of the many of these uh, house drudgeries. Uh, so, don't ever go with an idea that uh, sex therapy means something extraordinary always has to be done. He made a fortune before he was 30 by hard work, but he still can't make it with his wife. It is all over for him. There is something awfully anonymous about their lovemaking. One, two, three, and it's all over. They don't know if they are coming or going. What do you say? He can last forever, but nobody ever seems, or she never seems to care. What can be done? For years and years, they have been making love in the same way. 20 minutes of foreplay, 20 minutes of union culminating in mutual orgasm and 20 minutes of cap napping afterwards. No quick tricks on the kitchen floor, no mistakes and no variety. No matter with whom she has been with and she has been around, it takes her a long time to have an orgasm. Some men, men wait for her, some don't. But these are all stories which indicate that there is actually problem. In fact, many of the times you light the fire, but you don't know how to actually douse it. In fact, one of the whole lot of these things, uh, comments made and uh, for man, Anything female moving, many often times more than sufficient. But for the woman, the relationship and other related factors are extremely important. So when we say sex therapy, improving sir, communication. I hate, sir, I hate to interrupt, but we have already crossed the time when there are lots of okay, questions also. Problem. Okay, okay, done. So hmm. improving communication is one of the important uh, steps in the whole process. Touch is extremely important. This is what actually one needs to. And principles of sensitive focus, we are all well aware. Just as important as learning what your partner likes, taking turn, finding out where, in fact, what actually stimulates, being explored, and what we call uh, very definitive way, each of these steps need to be followed. So self-awareness, physical. Many of these inhibitory female sexual functioning, it is actually making the woman aware of what is her response and how actually to go about. So that means training her in masturbation. Non-genital, genital, vaginal containment, this is actually a process. If somebody is having what we basically call organic problem, not organic, in fact, ED or PE, there are specific steps suggested. In case of female, stage one, stage two, stage three, in fact, ultimately the mutual uh, stimulation and vaginal containment and vaginal containment with movement, so particular way actually, in fact, one can go. To conclude, treating sexual problems, dysfunction cannot be treated in isolation. Individuals seen in the context of relationship, helping function couple function optimally, and sex is a conversation carried out by another means. Biopsychosocial approach, basic information provided, eliminating myths and false uh, expectations, removing performance anxiety, and individualizing treatment. If you never try, you will never succeed. In fact, whether we we'll succeed, this is one of the most important. In fact, the kitchen is one of the best place to, in fact, to interact with each other. To be able to give pleasure to a beloved person and at the same time receive it, 
is a unique experience and it can seem like a small miracle. We are coming out with a new book, Embracing Heroes, Navigating Intimacy, Sensuality and Touch. And uh, shortly, maybe another about a month or so, we will be there. Thank you so much. And uh, in the time that is available, I think I have tried my level best to actually do the job. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It was a blockbuster Thanks. audience, I think. So over to chairpersons for their opening remarks. Then you can take up the questions from the chat box. Dr. Dr. Nilima? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Rao, for a wonderful presentation. And so thorough, right from beginning, uh, small points you've covered. Um, just want to look at the chat. See what questions there are. Ma'am, do you have a collection of the questions at all? Yeah, I'll just check. So thank you, Dr. Rao. Excellent session as always. Uh, the overview was complete as Dr. Alim said, blockbuster session. And very important key points, uh, talk about myths, improve communication, tailor-made therapy. And uh, yes, many, many options given uh, for people to look into uh, sexual problems affecting different age groups. So uh, thank you so much, sir. And yes, there are a number of questions. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the questions someone has asked. We have, any... uh, we have 15 minutes time. We'll definitely spend some time. So there are somebody has asked, are there any assessment scales to identify or quantify sexual dysfunction? Absolutely. In fact, I just avoided because this itself was too much actually. There are plenty of scales available, starting from screening scales, the scales which are necessary to be assessed for uh, maybe man and woman, the functionality, marital and other related aspects. Plenty of scales are available and I can refer you to look into in the Journal of Psychosexual Health. We have published a scale on different scales for uh, assessment of sexual functioning written by Dr. Sandeep Grover. I, in fact, I can send it to the Alim and we can forward it to all the people also. Yes. Almost around 28 different cases, how to utilize in different situations, it is there available. Thank you, sir. So another question is about how to differentiate between true and fake orgasms when it comes to women and uh, a good relationship is more important to her than her own needs. How to differentiate? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, many women uh, feel, uh, in fact, uh, if I'm not getting orgasm, means he will feel bad or uh, I'll be treated uh, wrongly and many such ideas. And uh, ultimately, they suffer to a great extent. In fact, just uh, yesterday in my OPD, I had one patient uh, coming from uh, Chamrajnagar, the neighboring district, who she was telling, in fact, there was some eye problem because of which everybody was thinking she will not get married, then got married and a very nice husband. In fact, very happy with him. But she says... I'm never getting orgasm. To, for his happiness, I have to just uh, act something. Otherwise, I'm uh, extremely happy because I don't want to interfere with him. But uh, there is some problem with me and it can be corrected. That's what I was told and I have come. No, you got the point? So, fake is fake. Not going to work or help either of them. Thank you, sir. Uh, third question is about sexual infidelity. You, okay, you can also, in fact, sir, uh, uh, both Nina and Nilima, in fact, they are all the experts in this area. <laughs> I'm a man talking about, but to, about women, uh, Nilima, what you will tell about fake, please. Uh, I have a different opinion, you know, because uh, a lot of us, we learn how to practice things by first imagining and pretending. So and as long as it doesn't become something that is a go-to option, a lot of masturbatory practices for women depend on teaching them how to practice. So initially, before they learn orgasmic triggers and how their body feels, they might need to fake it to understand how their body actually can be triggered into orgasm. Then they identify those orgasmic triggers and platforms to then experience that with their partners and therefore they can then teach their partners how to get them to orgasm. So it's not always that it's going to be faked. Um, the, what is the purpose of faking actually matters. That's what I believe. <laughs> Your opinions are okay. Okay, of course, of course, each opinion is actually true to some extent in uh, different different couples. Yes. 
there's a question about infidelity. Hmm. How to deal but, with uh, sexual infidelity in a marriage. See, the, the, the point is, we are all animals and uh, infidelity is actually inbuilt in both men and women. Men are uh, highly infidel in the sense that uh, maybe 80, 90, 95, 98. So common. Women, we thought uh, half of them actually like that, but now the things have changed. Where the availability of the, uh, what you call electric scooty and mobile internet and has uh, brought in such remarkable changes in the society. All those figures are around 60, 70 and all what we talk about now, maybe around 80, 90. So what actually Rak Nandi, one of the book what he has brought forward is called uh, Extramarital Intimacy. One many for joy. In many couples, there is actually some vacancy aroused. Hmm. And uh, once vacancy is there, means somebody will come and occupy. This applies to man and this applies to woman. Extremely common. And uh, ethical and other related issues, will let us not talk about it. So there is three factors for infidelity or fidelity. is availability, um, opportunity and proximity. All of those things are important. Infidelity and infidelity. Okay, great. Some very important questions are, what is the role of transference and counter-transference in sex therapy? Absolutely. In fact, uh, Nina, you want to answer that question? It is only to... Nina? Ah, sir. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having some internet problems here. Okay. Can huh. you hear me? Ah, Can yes, you sir. hear me? Yes, we are all able to hear you. Please, please. Ah, yeah. Yeah, uh, 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 sorry, the question was on transference and counter-transference. Counter yes, it is as important as you would do in any other therapy. And uh, counter-transference here is definitely a no-no. I mean, uh, it is very difficult to deal with. And uh, uh, means I've had some experience with transference when I have taken some uh, male patients. And it was very difficult to shift them. And one has to be uh, very alert for it. And I think our professionalism has to be maintained. And that uh, the distance has to be maintained, especially because they do start taking advantage and do start asking some personal questions also, uh, especially when you're dealing on a topic uh, of sex and, you know, talking to them on those issues. Like those were some of my experiences uh, maybe, sir, you could also give your uh, experience for counter-transference as well as transference. Well, I, I, of course, the, just like we professionals deal with any other problem, the same rule applies in this particular case also. But the chance is there are higher risks and uh, multiple uh, steps, things can go wrong. So one has to be always cautious and uh, deal with it. Psychotherapeutically, how this transference can be utilized and how it should work as far as counter transference is concerned. That can be also be utilized therapeutically. These are all a few things which have been, uh, uh, we have discussed a lot of time. And that is a very big issue also. Let us uh, confine one statement that be professional as much as possible. Very true. Professional boundaries are very important. And keeping you know confidentiality, consent, paperwork, administrative, uh, making sure your room has got adequate um, soundproofing that you got ways to keep record all of these things become very important both medical legally as well as professionally when you're dealing with couples and understanding that couples can collude <laughs> against therapy as well so uh, understanding that because you're seeing people together you may not always see an individual so that is also important to keep in mind so another question uh, what efforts are being made at GSS in training residents and others? So please approach Dr. Rao and his team. Uh, they are running a wonderful course, a fellowship course in sexual medicine has, has been running for several years. And a good book for recommending for sex therapy, very important IPS textbook uh, for, of sexual medicine and sex therapy. And Dr. Rao showed that in the slides. Uh, so do you want to talk about the book and the program? A few sentences, sir. Okay, of course, uh, I'm extremely happy that... Uh... Only currently available university approved uh, program is fellowship uh, course in psychosexual medicine at uh, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research. Open and for uh, MBBS doctors, one year program, 1.5 lakhs is the fee. 
and uh, every tuesday between uh, 3 to 6 we are conducting program online wherein there will be one uh, uh, academic lecture plus another one brief uh, communications and uh, maybe one or two cases for uh, discussion and with a lot of learning material and uh, a lot of questions and answers and more than anything else people bringing the cases discussion this is what actually happening and it's a good learning experience i think both for me and for the uh, those who are there in the course it is working out quite uh, nice the next program will start from uh, month of uh, first of april the advertisement mm -hmm. will be available in the uh, month of uh, february anybody interested they can call me or whatsapp me their uh, interest i am just uh, adding their number in one of the whatsapp groups 9845282399 mobile number so there's a question about uh, how do you do sex therapy with homosexuals and lesbian couples? Hmm. The, the, the whole issue, the relationship between homosexuals, how it happens and all our uh, experience is limited, but all said and done, the intensity of bonding and the issues that crop up are as good or almost the same as we see in case of uh, heterosexual couples. This homosexual, heterosexual is only the point of difference. As I was trying to tell, happy couple are those who understand each other completely. That means maybe man understands man and a woman understands woman. When man has to marry a woman and woman has to marry a man, in fact, the two people from two different contexts we are talking about. Whether it works out fine, the whole lot of stigma to a lot many other things which is interfering, but all said and done, they may be having comparatively less problem. Hypothetically speaking, I may be actually wrong on that count, but all said and done. When uh, one partner uh, leaves or when partner uh, shows less interest or a whole lot of such other things, they present with as much or as much of a depression, anxiety as uh, anybody else. In fact, this is what our uh, understanding. So in one of those uh, slides that you showed about orgasms and how uh, sex toys have, in that also we see that lesbian couples actually have the highest rate of partnered orgasmic activity, uh, even better than uh, heterosexual couples because understanding is better. Mm. Right. Hypothetically, I'm mean, because there is no hardcore data available, but mm. all said and done, possibly yes, because uh, many things what we have to navigate in a heterosexual relationship. I think they are uh, much less in that uh, homosexual couples. So there's uh, one more question. Um, how as psychiatrists can you raise awareness amongst the masses and take on the quacks in this field by busting myths? In fact, I always say many people want to talk about the sexual problems. When you are recognized in some particular way, at least about 10% of the people will come and talk to you. You just ask extra one question. Do you have any sexual concerns to talk about? The number of people who come forward increases by 50%. Because we are not talking, because we are not showing interest, because we are not concerned about it, because somehow we feel inadequate in dealing with this, everybody else who is uh, taking charge of this. And quacks have that, uh, what we call... Uh, capacity to influence people in a significant way compared to the medical professionals we have to go in a particular fashion, they're having field day. And at least in some of the formal Mumbai, Delhi, and all, in fact, uh, sexual problems, this, that, and how it can be treated, uh, every train and every wall, every uh, public uh, convenience uh, setups. In fact, there are plenty of people who are uh, making hay out of this particular people's ignorance and related things. We have to change ourselves. Absolutely, sir. And particularly, I think what you said was very important is that soon there will be a time where if you don't ask the question, uh, you're more likely to get uh, pulled up and sued because so many medicines, so many factors, and certainly research has shown that patients expect doctors to first start asking the questions. So somebody was asking about uh, vaginismus treatment. So you did mention non-consummated marriage, but maybe specifically vaginismus. But that is your field. You can just answer briefly that question, madam. Me? Vaginismus. Huh? <laughs> so with vaginismus, uh, because it's a pelvic floor spasm that causes um, uh, an, uh, and it's maybe associated with the phobic or a fear response to penetration or insertion of something into the vagina. It's an involuntary contraction of the pelvic floor associated 
with or without an avoidant response. So the woman might push the man away or they might, you know, not actually engage. So there's different grades. There are different grades of vaginismus and you assess that patient based on how aversion, how much aversion she shows to being assessed. And one of the most important things is the assessment on examination. So, so you want to continue? Maybe another three, four sentences. Okay, so in usually assessing vaginismus, I have many women who come, they've either gone through divorce, they have a wonderful sex education, they've got some, they may or may not have some triggering episode in their youth. Um, you've got to dig for evidence of either childhood sexual abuse or some kind of exposure, or being told that it's very painful, it's very uncomfortable, there has to be bleeding. And um, all of them have had a partner who was particularly rough or violent with them. And again, it boils down to the relationship. Until the woman is able to trust in that relationship, she will not open. So many times when I talk to my to couples who come to me, I say, if you can't have a conversation, it's very difficult to open your legs and allow somebody to enter you. So sex is the next step in a deep conversation, in, a, in an ability to be vulnerable with your partner, ability to allow that person to... Uh, interact with you on a very deep emotional level and then it may be possible to proceed with intercourse but many of these women they are in relationships where uh, they may not be with a partner who's loving or accepting of them and there is a lot of pressure particularly in Indian houses, a lot of pressure to have kids um, and many times you have to explain to them you don't always need to have intercourse to have a baby especially in today's day and age so there's many alternatives <laughs> as uh, a, a process Vaginismus is actually, one of the area in our fellowship program. We have seen people bringing out with a lot of cases related to this. But I was yeah. surprised. Huge problem. The Nilima gynecologist uh, deals with all these cases day in, day out. Mm -hmm. Very difficult, but definitely need to be attended and uh, properly helped. This is one of the very... Because the worst thing is to subject these women to surgery, which I see again and again. Yes, some, some women do need surgery, especially if they have a vaginal septum or they have... Um, uh, cribriform hymen or imperfect, you know, some form of incompletely perforated hymen. But that is so, those cases are so rare. They're rare, but they do exist. So, being able to examine a patient is also very important. Being able to assess a patient is just as important as doing a psychological assessment. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. We have a meeting. Yes, 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 yes. We have a so, meeting now. <laughs> We two hour meeting now, immediately at 9 30. I think sir has been speaking non stop. I think if somebody performs like the way sir performs, <laughs> there has been no need of all these courses. And uh, so I think I think we need to come back for a second session because things are not fully. I'm extremely really happy. 389 people were there at one particular point. Hello. Sir, it is more than 430, 430, 440 logins. Sir. More right. questions. <laughs> peak, of pre, peak of 393, sir. 94. Sir, we can do a follow-up session with just question answers because I think we if we start taking question answers, it will last very long. So oh, yeah. oh, I just put it in the chat. I forgot. Nine. Dr. Rao, your phone number. Nine eight. Nine eight. Four five two. Four five two. Eight two three. Eight two three. Double nine. They can send one WhatsApp message to me. That way, I'll keep them in the mailing list. I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you really like because uh, Nina, who works in this particular field, and uh, she has uh, her own name, uh, Yashtin uh, Sexual yes. Medicine, something special. And uh, Nilima from UK, but uh, serving our people in such a great way. And she, she has been a major strength for our uh, fellowship training program also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Amrit, can you say the thanks? <laughs> Tofan, sir? Can you say the thanks? Tofan, sir. Tofan, sir. Tofan, sir. Tofan, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, conclude, Kardi ji, sir. Well, that is, this has been an exciting and exhaustive session by Dr. T.S.S. Rao. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. It has been quite exciting, but uh, the answer related to LGBTQ, I think it has to be explored more. I am not quite convinced about uh, because it must be different. Then it may be easier. It may be difficult. The dynamics is to be different. Uh, I didn't catch. What is that? 
ിയോ <laughs> Amit, so far, let me let me from the core of my heart thank thank. Let me from the core of my heart thank Dr. T. S. S. Rao sir, exhaustive, wonderfully described, humor, substance. You know, you you get everything. You know, there is there is masala for everybody along with knowledge. Nina, madam, you know we have seen her in the last two or three Thursday musings. She has been absolutely wonderful. Nilima, madam, thank you so much. the the response from the audience has been tremendous it's, it's been a blockbuster let me let me tell you so after after a long time we had this many people that it was not just about sex it was also about pieces sir and it 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 takes you should take a lot of credit and thank you for the musings team thank you ipo solution street by gen torrent hope to catch sir again in another blockbuster blockbuster episode good night good night everybody thank you sir thank you so good much night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night. 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 Good night.